So today I've got with me Dave Taylor and he is a coffee expert and we're going to cover 18th century coffees in general and specifically roasting uh, green coffee beans over a fire here in an 18th century manner. Uh, thanks for joining us today on 18th Century Cooking. Dave Taylor is a longtime friend and uh, tell us a little bit about your history with coffee and reenacting. Uh, I started reenacting in 75 and it's been a long, eventful, colorful, interesting journey. Um, something that's like I 40 would... years, Dave. Do you know yeah. that? 40 <laughs> years. Anyway. That's, that's right. When John was a child, yes, that's what I got started in this <laughs> hobby. Um, but it's been a long and interesting journey and I've learned lots of things over the years and, and I recommend the hobby to anybody because you get to do and see things that most people don't get to do. What about your coffee experience? The coffee experience, I started roughly 15 years ago in, in the coffee business, opening up coffee houses. Uh, right. My first introduction, I lived in San Francisco in the late 60s and early 70s, and there was a coffee roaster about two blocks from my apartment, and I would go down there, and I'm going like, this is not so Folgers. Cool. Yeah, yeah. A whole different, whole different world in coffee. Uh, and then moving back to Indiana, that kind of folded because there was no coffee roasters here. And about 15 years ago, uh, we opened up coffee houses. We had the Blue Lion Coffee Houses, and we started probably about a year or so later, started roasting our roasting, own coffees. Yeah. A lot of people who never drank coffee before started drinking coffee once they, they were able once to- Once they tasted your coffee. Yeah, once they started tasting my coffee. And, and, and that's, you know, it, that's almost like a commercial, but at the same time, it's absolutely true because they'd never had really good coffee. And they're going like, I didn't know coffee could taste like this. What's typical, at least for the time period, what are the different variations? When, when coffee is, is green, uh, that's, that's how you typically want to, to purchase it. And that was typically in the 18th century, that's how you bought coffee. Right. Well, because you, you shipped long distances. Right, right. Uh, you know, you come from the, the, the Caribbean. So almost everybody that's making coffee at home, they're going to be roasting it themselves. Correct, they're okay. gonna roast it themselves. So, so what kind of equipment do we need? Okay, well you can, a basic skillet. In, in coffee, when they first started roasting, they used a skillet uh -huh. uh, or, or like that. And that's still typical in a lot of Arabic countries. You roast the coffee right then, you go ahead and you grind it. And it's, that process, it's, it's almost like the Japanese tea ceremony. Right. You do the whole thing right, right there. Right. And that's the new frying pan that we uh, have on our website, and I'll make sure to put a link down in the uh, in the description text. And this is a, a typical 18th century. You notice the legs on here, the right. spew on here. This tells you it's 18th century in, in how this was made, when it was right. made. And then uh, a lot of people think this is a sauce pot, but it is not a sauce pot. This is actually a coffee roaster. Cool. The reason is you have the rounded bottom. You want to keep your coffee moving all the time. Right. This is an 18th century coffee roaster also. Uh -huh. um, you would put the beans in here. This set, uh, either you could you set it on the edge, but a lot of times just set on the fireplace dogs. Right, right. Set like this, and you're turning this like this. And that's, right. and this is still contemporary roasters today. Use that same method. The, the roaster that I roast coffee commercially, uh -huh. drum roaster, just like this. Cool. This style of roaster here, um, I kind don't like know. the whole thing enclosed. Yeah. Right, right. This is where you would you would drop your charcoal down inside. So it's or like your, a built-in brazier. Right. right. This is like a brazier. To roast good coffee, you pay attention mm -hmm. and, and to what you're doing, and you never let it sit there. If you let right. it sit there, you have black on the bottom and green, green on, the, on top. the top. That's bad. Okay. Different coffee beans will have different characteristics, and that's how you, whether it's like a Mexican coffees will be very sweet as opposed to African coffees that are like dry red wines. Right, so it and depends on the soil right. and the climate and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Which yeah. side of the mountain it grew on. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just oh, like yeah. wines. There's 1,200 different chemical compositions in coffee and all of those things uh, bear upon how the flavor of the coffee is right, going to right, be. Right. So, and then you have different coffees, like I said, that have characteristics that can be more forgiving. Okay, yeah, so, so easy ones and hard ones. Right, yeah, right. right. In, in saying that, we'll kind of get this batch started. Okay, so what kind of beans What beans do you have in this uh, lot here? These are South and Central American beans. Okay. 
and like I said, this is to, and, and there are some Mexican beans in here, give it an inherent sweetness. Oh. And then there's a, the, a South American bean that is there again, very forgiving, that's used in uh, almost all basic coffees, mm. uh, including espressos. So it gives you a lot of latitude okay. in what you can do. So you could roast this very light roast. Mm -hmm. So let's get some beans in the pot, yeah. I guess. And these are, these are some green beans. So this is a, a mixture I've set up that I uh, typically take to events. Now the key to roasting is you have to keep the beans moving all the time. You can't... And you had this pan preheated. We had right. this setting on the fire nice right. and hot. How right. hot do you really want to get that? Well, you want to end up... You're going to take the internal temperature or the temperature of these beans on the outside 350 to 450 degrees. So they do get hot. So you're right. almost to the point where you would melt solder. Right. So. Right. And see, that's one of the things here is you can see the advantage of the of the rounded, yeah, rounded, rounded pan. Right. Coffee typically, after it's roasted, uh, is good for about uh, six weeks. That's the mm -hmm. time that you want to drink it in. And you can see it's starting to change in, in color. Uh, you have what is uh, first and second crack or pop. And it, it's kind of like popcorn. And, it's, and it will start to take off some of the outer husk here. Okay. Now you see that chaff coming up? Yeah. That is, we're getting into, into the first crack of this, and that's where the, the beans are starting to expand a little bit, and they're taking off that outer layer. Right. And this is where you've got to pay attention. The reality is that uh, 30 seconds to a minute can make a big difference in yeah. how your beans will come out. And you can see now we're, we're big getting a difference. big yeah. difference in the color now. Uh, what are you looking for in a smell as you're getting toward the end? And you know, do you usually look mostly at the color, or do you really go by a smell? You, you're using all that. You're trying to have these come out at a, a certain time temperature ratio within 10 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. If you're less than 10 minutes in your roasting process, a lot of times the outside will be like a cake that is cooked on the outside right. but still raw on the inside. Right. So you got to take take your time. Yeah. But if you go too long, you're going to bake the beans instead of roast them. Okay. And, it, and in other words, it would be like dried out bread as opposed to toast. Okay. You know, you can see now. Right. And They're there's really some shine on up. there. Right. The shine, you can see like the oil has come out to the yeah. outside. And so this is about where I would typically want okay. to stop roasting for myself. Okay. For, for my flavor. So you can see this is this a combination right. of lights and darks. And this is because I set it on here sometimes and not right. keep it moving. So you get a bit of a mix there. Right. <clears throat> and this is probably, for this batch, this is where I would stop. Okay. And at that point, you pour it in here. Okay. Yep. And what you want to do is cool these down. Beans. Or just keep cooking if you. Yeah, if you leave them hot, they'll keep cooking. So we've got this wonderful roast here, and really the idea is uh, to, to get you to be able to make a better cup of coffee, especially in the camp in the most uh, proper and authentic way. So we've taken our green beans and we've roasted them, and now we've got the next step of turning this into our coffee right. drinks. What do you, what do you, what have we got here for the grinding? Yeah, well this is a typical 18th century grinder. It, this is what you would, you would find if you look in, in uh, so artifacts of the American Revolution. There's a couple of examples right. in uh, this grinder in there. Right. We actually sell that this particular style uh, on our website and in the catalog. Um, sometimes they're sold today as a pep, giant pepper grinder, but really yeah. they're a Turkish Co Turkish uh, coffee grinder. And this oh. has been typically I, I can't even really tell you how far back they go. Right. Uh, far, far, farther than the American Revolution. Though. Right. Right. These guys uh, typically are made for a Turkish grind, so they right. grind very fine. Correct. You can open this up to the maximum, and it's still a pretty fine grind. Yeah, it's still going to be fairly fine. We're ready to toss it in our yeah. water. This is simmering, just, boiling? Yeah, it's just on the edge of boil. And typically what you really are looking for, perfect water temperature, 195 to 205 degrees. So even if you get your water boiling, what you do is you pull the pot off and Back let it, it off settle, a little bit, settle yeah. it just a little bit. Yeah. We're going to dump that in there. Here, let me give this a little bit of a stir. It's sitting on top. And you can see that kind of bubbled up there a little bit. Yeah. Nice brown. So let's take this off here. 
And we're going to set this just yeah. right here on the side. And we'll let this set here for a minute or so and, and just kind of brew up. We've got a little cold water here to settle the grounds. Hopefully they get them to sink down. And it looks like we're gonna, we've got a little bit here, but not bad. And you can see it's a, a little cloudy, so we have a little bit here. You could also, you know, mm. put a little piece of cloth or something across the top, maybe to filter it out. So Dave, I'm not a coffee drinker, so this is gonna be, what do you think? It's hot, it's, <laughs> it's, it's still hot. It smells good. It smells wonderful. Yeah, it came out to be a pretty good roast. Not not too dark. You have that good coffee flavor in there. A uh, medium body. Yeah. So I'm I'm real pleased with how this came out. Right. You know, very drinkable. In two or three days, actually, about the third day after coffee ro is roasted, right. that's when it's at its very best. So, so this super works. fresh roasted isn't the best. Right. You want fresh it's ground. Fresh ground. Uh -huh. That's that's what you want. So what you typically want to do is. Drink your coffee in a six week period after it's roasted. So people ask about, do I want to freeze this coffee, put it in the refrigerator? No, you don't. Because every time you take that coffee out of the refrigerator and you bring it out, it attracts moisture out of the air and you're ruining your coffee. When you grind coffee, that six week window of flavor drops down to 12 hours. Whoa! So you're gonna lose six weeks of flavor. Wow. All that work that you went to to roast that coffee right. and to make the perfect so cup. So buying pre-ground coffee is just no, crazy. No, no, you don't want, because how long has it been sitting in a warehouse? So I really want to thank Dave for coming in and giving this information. We have so much more to actually cover in coffee and in other topics that I want to talk, we want to have discussions with Dave. Uh, if you've got questions, uh, more questions about coffee, 18th century coffee, we're going to do a bigger in-depth um, episode. Maybe it's just going to be an audio episode, a podcast, or something similar to that. But if you've got questions specifically about 18th century coffee, uh, please send them in in the comments below. We'd love to hear those, and that'll help us uh, generate that content. Thank you so much, Dave, for coming in. Yeah, and, uh, salute. And we will, we will get... We will get a lot more out to you. I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you so much for your great comments and questions. Uh, make sure to check out upcoming episodes. Thanks so much. If you're new to our channel, I want to welcome you. Uh, you can subscribe by clicking the button right up here. Uh, also check out our related videos. Thanks so much for watching.